Hey, Maria. Are you going to be working a night shift at that cleaning job of yours again today? Yes, Lucio. If it's dinner you're worried about, then I put it in the fridge, so just put it in the oven if you want to eat. That's not what I'm talking about. It's a problem that you're always working night shifts because it's simply unnatural for a wife to be doing such a thing. That cleaning company of yours you work at, surely there are also jobs during the day, right? Why don't you just stop working night shifts and switch to doing day job shifts instead? Oh, why should I do that? You can earn more money working night shifts than by working day shifts since there's a bonus. I don't think this is the case, but you're not making fun of my job again, are you? That's... Well, I did just get scolded for doing that at our last family gathering. Our son Glauco getting mad at me was especially humiliating. Which is why I don't intend on bringing it up again. It's fine if that's the case, but I still can't get over how you told me that... If you've got that time to clean for someone else, then clean the house, will you? I mean, I would if it made money, but it doesn't. Yeah, whatever. I still don't think I like my wife cleaning for someone else. Actually, I don't care if they get mad at me anymore. I'll say whatever I want to say because I'm the husband and pillar of his family. I don't like how you're always working night shifts. Huh? So now you're not just making fun of my job, but you're also making fun of night shifts as well? And what do you mean you're the pillar of this family, Lucio? Where did you even get that idea? I'm the husband, and the husband is the pillar of the family. And I'm not making fun of you. This is a valid complaint. To think that our son Glauco is about to get married, yet there's still one person in the family who has a different schedule than everyone else. Seriously, do you know how annoying it is to see you go off to work every night just as I'm about to go to bed? Have you ever thought about what Glauco's new wife Nadia is going to think when she comes here and sees you doing night shifts every day? You're surely going to be looked down upon by Nadia if she finds out that her mother-in-law works night shifts as a cleaner. No, Nadia isn't the kind of person who would judge others based on something so superficial. And what are you even talking about? I never heard that Nadia was going to be living with us. Well, she is. Now you know, I guess. Um, but this is the first time anyone's told me this. I mean, our son Glauco is our only child, and he still lives with us at our house. So it isn't only natural that his wife would come and live with us once they get married? Which means that you're going to have to live with your daughter-in-law. And I'm not going to have any of it if you two start fighting. Also, if you work night shifts, there's going to be a possibility that you're going to make Nadia do all the housework that needs to be done during the day. Seriously? That's the main point of your argument? Why don't you and Glauco do the housework if you're so worried about Nadia having to do everything? No! Housework is a woman's job. Jesus, Maria, do you have no common sense? Huh? Wow, so that's how you're going to be. Seriously, you're the only person in this family who still thinks like that. This is 2023, Lucio, not the 60s. Besides, you don't even understand why I'm working night shift in the first place. Trying to argue with you makes my head hurt. Huh? What are you talking about? I know it's 2024. Don't make fun of me. <sighs> my shift is about to begin, so I'll end the conversation here. Hey, wait. I'm not done scolding you, Maria. Mother, is it true that you and Dad agreed to our marriage on a basis that we're going to be living with you? Huh? Did your father tell you that? Yeah, he did. You see, Father sent a letter to Nadia's house titled How to Be a Housewife. It's some sort of rule book he made for Nadia when she moves in here. What? Seriously? Sorry, Mom. But we don't intend on living with you guys, at least for the time being. I mean, I'm an only child. So me and Nadia agree that we'll probably have to move in with you guys at some point when you guys get older. But we're not ready to do that just yet. And we want some time for the two of us. Don't believe what your father tells you. I never thought that you guys were going to be living with us anyways, because I heard about how you two got married and how you've already prepared a new house. 
Although your father should have heard about it as well, as usual, it seems to have flown completely over his head. Maybe he forgot about it? Yes, maybe he did. But knowing your father, it never went in his head in the first place. Please tell Nadia that your father is just causing trouble on his own, and at least I don't intend on making you guys move in with us. Tell her not to worry and that I'm sorry for my husband's actions. I'll do something about your father myself. Understood. I'm counting on you then, Mother. Hello, Lucio. There is something I want to talk to you about. What is it? It seems that you sent Glauco's wife a strange letter. Oh, the one titled How to Be a Housewife, right? Those are my conditions that she has to agree to if she wants to live here. What in the world do you think you're doing? Do you want to get in the way of your son's marriage or something? First of all, a title like that shouldn't be written by a grown man in his 50s. I was actually quite disturbed when I heard you wrote that. And second of all, Glauco and Nadia aren't going to be living with us. I already told you that they've already found a new house and that they're going to be moving there once they get married, right? What? Of course they found a house they're going to be moving into once they get married. This house. And why in the world would I want to get in the way of my son's marriage? You're the one who's getting in the way of their marriage by working night shifts all the time. I'm telling you, this is going to cause problems between you and Nadia. At this rate, she's going to be one of those wives that looks down on their mother-in-law and that's never any good. I already told you that Nadia isn't the kind of person that would judge someone based on something that superficial. Besides, when did we agree that Glauco and Nadia would be moving in with us after they got married? Because that's what you seem to be telling them. I mean, it's obvious, so there's no need to say it, right? Of course they're going to be moving in with us. Oh, I get it now. Nadia's already started looking down on you. And this is your way of getting revenge and bullying her in return, isn't it? Huh? Honestly, I'm impressed at your imagination, Lucio. If only you could use it for something a bit more useful. Who knows, you might make a good short story author or something. Huh? What in the world are you talking about? Writing short stories isn't a proper profession, Maria. Anyways, if they move in with us, me and Glauco are going to find out about the tensions that you already have between you two. So you're trying to get them to not move in with us no matter what? This is why the quarrels between women are so hard to deal with. What in the world are you talking about, Lucio? I guess it can't be helped. You leave me no choice but to resort to my secret weapon. The daughter-in-law that starts looking down on her mother-in-law is a problem too, of course. But the start of all of this mess is you refusing to quit your knife shifts. I don't want to deal with the two of you fighting in the house, so leave. What? Are you being serious right now? Yes. That also means I'm divorcing you. Don't consider this place your home anymore. Um, you're confusing me more and more, Lucio. You know that we're renting this apartment that we're currently living in, right? And of course, you also know who's the one paying for the rent, right? If you divorce me, then who's going to pay for the rent? What? <laughs> That's what you were worried about? I could pay 200 euros a month as well, you know. Huh? 200 euros a month? The rent for this apartment is 1,200 euros a month, right? Glauco pays 1,000 euros a month while you pay 200 euros a month, right? Uh... It won't make much of a difference whether I have to pay 200 euros a month or not, don't you think? Also, the housework isn't going to be a problem as well. Nadia is going to be moving in with us, so she'll take your place and do it for us when you're gone. Wow, I just... Don't have any words anymore. Hmm. I can't even bother to argue with you anymore since you seem to not understand a word I say. Fine. If you want to get divorced, then let's get divorced. I see. I see. Alright. 
I'll get the divorce papers from the city hall. So could you pack your stuff while I'm doing that? So you can leave this house as soon as possible, you know? Mother? Dad said you two were going to get divorced. Yeah, what he says is true this time. You see, I just couldn't find the motivation to argue with him anymore. What happened? Well, you see... He has a ton of misunderstandings, and he keeps deciding things on his own as if all that he says is true. He even said that he didn't tell me about you guys moving in with us since it's so obvious there was no need to tell me in the first place. Not only that, but he thinks me and Nadia are fighting now for some reason and says that it's my fault for not quitting my night shifts. What? Yeah, and you won't believe this, but... He even thinks that the rent we have to pay for this house is 1,200 euros a month. Huh? Where did he get that idea? I know, right? He thinks that I pay 200 euros a month and that you pay 1,000 euros a month. Huh? Oh, and he even said that the housework isn't going to be a problem since once Nadia moves in, he's going to make her do it in my place. Seriously? There were a lot of other crazy things he told me, but I can't even bother to explain them to you anymore. I'll just send you and Nadia screenshots of the conversation we had by text later. Um, looks like you had to put up with a lot, Mom. That's an understatement, but thanks. You said that you and Nadia would be moving to your new house at the end of next month, right? Yeah... I plan on terminating the contract of our current house at the same time your dad and I get divorced. Sorry, but could you and Nadia move to this new house of yours a bit earlier than you had previously planned? I understand. But still, I wonder what dad intends on doing from now on. I mean, no matter what dad says, the truth is that you pay for all the rent plus my living expenses. Without you, this family wouldn't be able to support itself financially. I gave up trying to explain it to him. Not only does he not understand a word I say, even when I explain it to him very carefully, but he also acts as if he's the one who's right all of the time. I don't think a person like that will ever understand until they're faced with the reality. Yep. You know Dad best after all. I think you should do whatever you think is best, Mother. Just know that me and Nadia are on your side. Thank you. All right, I'm going to leave now. Hmm? You're at that one day job of yours now, right? I just turned in the divorce papers earlier and I just got done packing right now, so I'm going to leave now. Oh, finally. You know, I was actually starting to get a little impatient and thought of kicking you out by force. <laughs> Is that so? I mean, I had to find a new place to live and sign the necessary contracts as soon as my night shift ended, so it couldn't be helped. Yeah, whatever. What about Nadia? When is she going to be moving in? I don't know the details, but apparently she's going to be moving around the same time I leave. Oh, so that means she's going to be here by tomorrow. What? I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going to be canceling the contract of this house, so no one's going to be moving in by tomorrow. What? What do you mean you're canceling the contract? I mean, I'm the legal owner of this house, and if I'm going to be leaving, then it's only natural that I cancel the contract, don't you think? Uh... I already explained this to you several times, didn't I? Wait, hold on. If you really are the legal owner or something, then just let Glauco be the legal owner instead. Do the necessary paperwork with the landowners and make it happen. Um, that's impossible. Come on, Maria. Do you understand what you're saying right now? The three of us are supposed to live in this house from now on. You can't just cancel the contract because of your selfishness. Is it all right with you if me and your son become homeless? Um, but I heard that Glauco and Nadia already found a new place to live. 
It looks like you have a lot of misunderstandings, but you do know that Glauco proposed to Nadia because he was relocated to another region at his job, right? They're going to be moving to near Glauco's new workplace once they get married. Which means that the thousand euros a month he was kind enough to give us for our living expenses until now will also be gone. Huh? What do you mean a thousand euros a month for living expenses? You mean that he pays a thousand euros a month to the rent, right? That's the next thing I wanted to tell you. I pay for all of the rent here. What? You were paying 1,200 euros a month and not 200? You've got that wrong as well. The rent is 2,000 euros a month, not 120 euros a month. 2,000 euros a month? All of this is your fault, you know. The fact that me and Glauco have to step up like this? Huh? What do you mean it's my fault? The fact that your company went bankrupt three years ago can't be helped, and it wasn't your fault. But after that, you seem to have zero motivation to go out and find another job. All you did ever since then was work one-day jobs when you felt like it. You would earn 800 euros in a good month, but only 300 euros on bad months. We were only able to rent this house that cost 2,000 euros a month in the first place because both of us had proper jobs at the time. Then you lost your job, but for some reason you refused to move. Since you had no intention of finding a proper job again, the only choice we had was for me to work harder than before. Do you understand? That was the situation at the time, so I told the company about it and made a request asking them to let me work night shifts, which pay well. Uh -huh. Even after all that, we were still only barely able to get by, which is why Glauco gave us a thousand euros a month from his own salary. I was really thankful for his help, but I was also ashamed I had to rely on my own son since my husband was such a mess. Um, I didn't understand much of what you said, but does that mean I'm going to be living in this house on my own from now on? No. Like I said, I'm canceling the contract on this house, so you need to leave by the end of next month. Unless, of course, you want to buy it for yourself, although... Considering how much money you make a month, I think that's impossible. But... So... All of you are just going to leave me? Why in the world did it come to this? I can't bother to explain myself to you anymore, so... Why don't you think of why this happened yourself? Tell me! No, I'm done explaining things to you all the time, since it clearly has no effect. So you're just going to ignore the demands of your husband? I'm the pillar of this family, and you have to do what I say. Um, but I just turned in our divorce papers to the city hall. You're not my husband anymore, Lucio. And you definitely weren't the pillar of this family, especially these last few years. Uh, but... Fine, I'll give you a hint as to what was the cause of all of this. A hint? Tell me! Delusional princess! Goodbye! Huh? What do you mean, delusional princess? That hint is too hard to understand. Give me another one! The first thought that came to me after I got divorced was, I should have done this sooner. I knew that once my son got married and left the house, we wouldn't be able to maintain our current lifestyle, as he wouldn't be able to give a thousand euros a month to us anymore. I talked with Lucio about this and tried to convince him into moving into a cheaper apartment, but he seemed to like this house a lot and refused to move out. What happened next, you already know. After I cancelled the contract, my husband now had nowhere to go and was also practically unemployed. It seems that even he understood that he was in trouble and that he had to do something. So he went to the job hunting center to find a job. It seems he found a job that came with housing, but apparently that personality of his still hasn't changed. He keeps saying these extremely delusional things that, at best, confuse everyone. And he even tries to get the younger employees who've been working there longer than him to do what he says. 
Because of this, no one wants to be anywhere near him, and so he spends his free time being alone and lonely. Stephanie, would you mind telling me exactly what you're doing with my husband? Excuse me? Oh, hello there, Angie. What am I doing with your husband? I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, what are you doing in my house with my husband, Steve, at this very moment? Uh-oh. Um, I guess you're home already, huh? Yes, I finished my work a lot sooner than I thought I would, so I left work about an hour earlier than usual, and I just got home. Uh-oh. Well, looks like we're busted. You don't seem to be very worried about being caught like this. Well, I guess you could say that I'm a little surprised. But just so you know, Steve and I are super duper deeply in love with each other. You know what he told me just a few minutes ago? That he's way happier with a beautiful woman like me than an old ugly hag like you. And besides, I always knew that if I got caught, I could just divorce my husband and poof, problem solved. Do you really think you can get away with what you're doing that easily? <laughs> of course I do. Steve already said that he'd pay for my lawyer and any damages I had to pay to my husband for cheating on him. Ah, I see. So that's why you seem so flippant right now. I guess that would make sense. Steve's family is pretty wealthy after all. <laughs> I know, right? And this gorgeous house that me and Steve are going to live in together is his, which means it's mine too now. <laughs> well, yeah, it was his family's house. And now it's going to be our family's house. Not that I care, but how long are you planning to stay in there? Uh-oh, are you going to try to kick me out now? You can be patient and wait for us to be done, okay? You came home before we were finished. Aren't you forgetting something? It's summer vacation. School is out right now. Well, yeah, but, like, so what? So our daughter, who was playing at her friend's house today, is going to be coming home any moment now, and I am not about to allow my daughter to see her own father messing around with the mother of one of her classmates. Do I make myself clear? Aw, oh, man. What a spoil sport. Are you dressed right now? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Don't rush me. Hey, wait a minute. I'm looking all around the room, but I can't find Steve's or my clothes anywhere. Sorry about that. I found your clothes strewn about the living room floor, so I took the liberty of throwing them out into the yard. You what? What were you thinking? I was thinking that I didn't want you running away from me. Ugh, you are super bitter about this, huh? Fine, I won't run away. I'm just gonna go home, so hurry up and give me my clothes back. Well, I'm terribly sorry to tell you, but that's not gonna happen. Huh? What is your problem? Why not? I've known about your relationship with my husband for a little over half a year now. Wait, you knew? Then, wait a minute, just a little bit ago you were acting like you didn't know. You asked me what I was doing with your husband, but you knew? What was that all about? Oh, that? Oh, that was just me buying time and stringing you along while I waited for everyone to arrive. Everyone? Who's everyone? Everyone. Steve's parents and your parents are with me, and we're about to come inside. What? If you don't mind, could you at least cover yourself up with a blanket or towel? And not my good blankets, please. What is going on, Angie? Ugh, thanks a lot, Angie. I am in a world of trouble now, thanks to you. Wow, I'm surprised you texted me so soon. Oh, yeah? And what about you? Are you already at your parents' house or whatever? Yeah, I just got to my folks' house with my daughter a little bit ago. Well, good for you. While everyone was tearing into Steve and me, you were just putzing around packing up your suitcase. Man, that was some tribunal. They were really ticked at us. 
but it was all worth it to watch your miserable self walking out of our beautiful mansion, sad and alone. And since the dust has settled, I'm already back in our mansion enjoying some sweetie lovey dovey time with my Steve. There's no one to get between us anymore, so we can do anything and everything we want, whenever we want. <laughs> this is the best. You seem to be pretty happy with yourself right now, but did you really think that this was all over already? Do we really need to go through this again? I just told you. Steve is going to pay me for my lawyer and whatever damages I have to pay you, okay? What is there for me to be worried about? Oh, Steve told me to tell you that he'll just wire a lump sum payment to your account whenever our lawyers come to a settlement. I was already going to demand that, so he's not going to be able to appear to come out on top of this by pretending he offered to do it beforehand. <laughs> what? Oh my god, you are such a bitter old hag. Man, I am so happy I'm not ugly and alone like you. Keep it coming, Stephanie. Say whatever you'd like to me. Nothing you can say will hurt me. Oh, we'll see about that. <laughs> I am about to do all the things for my Steve that you never did for him. Have fun. Oh, trust me, we're going to have lots of fun, way more fun than he ever had with you. And we're going to do it in your house, on your bed. Oops, it's not your house anymore, is it? <laughs> oh, good gracious, I'm so very, very sad. So very sad, absolutely devastated. How will I recover? I'm more worried about how I'm going to recover after tonight with Steve. <laughs> Good morning! Did you sleep well? I didn't. <laughs> I've got more great news for you. I'm pregnant, and it's Steve's baby. Wow, that certainly is an incredible thing. <laughs> right? I was feeling kind of sick this morning, and I thought maybe it was because of our fun last night, but I got a test, and it was positive. It's almost scary how this is going exactly like I planned it. Planned? Yep, it was my plan all along to get pregnant with Steve's baby so I could get my hands on this fabulous house and all of Steve's money. Now all that's left is for you to divorce Steve and I'll get everything I wanted. And now your part in my little plan is finished so you can go ahead and just disappear forever. <laughs> I see. Well, thanks for that, Stephanie. Now I can finally get divorced. Huh? Ugh, I have been so sick and tired of that pathetic loser for so long. You can have him. Oh, and by the way, you should hurry up and get ready to get out of that house as soon as possible. What are you talking about? I'm not leaving. Why would I leave? This luxurious mansion is going to be our little love nest now. I know you're better and everything, but seriously, you're getting to be just plain pathetic. <laughs> Angie, what's going on here? I just got told that we have to be out of this house by tomorrow. Did you know something about this? What did you do, Angie? Didn't you know? That house is going to be put up for sale. The house is getting sold? Uh, but why? Tell me what you did right now. Calm down, Stephanie. I didn't do anything. I don't believe you, but none of this makes sense. The house belongs to Steve, doesn't it? How could someone just put his house up for sale without permission? You better start explaining what the hell is going on here and fast. First of all, you're wrong about one thing. That house isn't Steve's. What? Actually, that's Steve's grandfather's house. His name is on the title and everything. Wait. His grandpa? Yeah, his grandparents are currently living in their vacation house in Florida, where they moved after he retired about 20 years ago. 
He was worried the house would start to fall apart if it was left unoccupied, so he allowed us to live there on the condition that we would make sure it was well taken care of. Then, you lied to me! You told me it was Steve's house! Uh, scroll up, Stephanie. I said no such thing. I told you it was his family's house. I never said it was Steve's house. Oh. You see, it's not my fault that you interpreted what I said incorrectly. I don't believe this! It seems like they already have a buyer lined up, and they're planning to bring in the construction crew to start on some renovations in two days. Two days? Yep, and if you're still there, that's gonna cause a lot of trouble for the real estate company and the workers. So I would recommend you getting your stuff out of there as soon as possible. This is the worst! I have never been so miserable in my entire life! Why is this happening to me? I don't deserve any of this! Ugh, what do you want now, Stephanie? Our divorce has already been finalized and I already got my lump sum payments for child support and your affair, so I have no more reason or desire to speak to either of you ever again. We packed up our stuff and got out of our house, but we had nowhere else to go, so we went over to Steve's parents' house, and they wouldn't let us in. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. They made it pretty clear that they never want to see Steve or you ever again. But it gets worse. Then we tried going to my parents' house, and they wouldn't let us stay with them either. You probably should have seen that coming too, after, well everything that you did after that we only had one more hope we tried going to steve's grandpa's place down in florida after all i'm absolutely gorgeous and i'm pregnant with his grandchild so i figured that he would have to help us out but when we said who we were on the intercom he ignored us locked the gate and shut all the blinds on his house well steve's grandpa was in the marines and you know their motto always faithful it doesn't surprise me that he'd shut you out after both of you betrayed your families, even if you are beautiful and pregnant with his great-grandchild. Why? Why is everyone turning their backs on me? Why are they all taking your side? I'm beautiful and stylish. You're ugly and you don't even get your nails done. I should be the one with a rich husband, not you. Uh, what? I mean, just think about it. Who would a wealthy and a powerful executive want on their arm at a party? Me or you? The choice is obvious. I even got my hair done just like those women on Real Housewives. Wait a minute. Whatever, screw all of them. I'll just have Steve buy a luxury penthouse suite for me. That will show them who's boss. I'll look out the window of my luxurious apartment with a glass of expensive wine in my hand and laugh at all the pathetic little people down below. Stephanie? Steve's not an executive. He's a mid-level employee. What? He's not the company president. Why not? He's the former president's son, isn't he? Who else would they give the job to? Well... Yeah, our company has a pretty strict meritocratic system in place. They don't allow nepotism. By the way, I'm actually the head of the department Steve was working in. You? But in any case, it came out that he'd been messing around with his mistress while he was supposed to be working remotely, so he got fired the other day. Didn't you notice I said the department he was working for in past tense? I thought it was obvious. He got fired? And what's this about a mistress? He told me I was the only one for him, and now I hear he's messing around with another woman? Uh, no, Stephanie, that's not what I meant. You were the mistress who he got fired over. Me? Well, duh, think about how often the two of you have been seeing each other these last several months. Don't you think it's odd that he could spend so much time with you during the day? He was on the clock the whole time. So, you're saying that... that I... Yes, that's what I'm saying. Your affair with Steve is the reason he's now unemployed. 
Though to be fair, Steve is an adult and should know better than to fool around with his mistress while he's on the clock. Actually, he should just plain know better than to have a mistress, period, but ugh, that's another story. No way! And another thing. His little stunt where he agreed to pay for the affair and child support in one lump sum payment. Well, thanks to that, his savings have been completely wiped out. And seeing as though his parents are in the process of writing him out of their will... Uh, I think you'd better abandon any hopes of accompanying Steve to any high-class parties as a trophy wife for the foreseeable future. Oh my god! There's no point in even being with him anymore! I'll just have to get back together with my ex-husband! Do you actually think he'll take you back? Why wouldn't he? You are currently pregnant with the child of the man you were having an affair with. What self-respecting man would ever take back someone like you? Seriously, get real. Oh, your other children are all staying with your husband, too, and it seems like none of them want anything to do with you anymore. This can't be happening. I had the perfect plan. Everything was going right. I was supposed to get the pampered life. I deserve the pampered life. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to take a shower. Here's what happened to the two of them after they got kicked out of their house. In their search for a new place to live, they first went to Steve's parents and then to Stephanie's parents and got turned down by both. After that, they tried going all the way to Florida to beg Steve's grandpa for help, again unsuccessfully. That's a cross-country trip, so I have no doubt that between travel expenses, food, and lodging, they must have spent around $1,000 to get there. Neither of them have jobs. What were they thinking, spending that much? <laughs> Unbelievable. After that, they had no choice but to lower their standard of living and move into an old, run-down apartment downtown. Apparently, there are more rats living there than people. Oof, yikes. Now, while both of their parents have officially cut them out of their lives, they're apparently still keeping an eye on them. After all, this isn't just about the two of them anymore, there's also their baby to be worried about. My understanding is that their parents will ensure that the baby, who is the only innocent party, will be taken care of, even if that means eventually having to remove the baby from Steve and Stephanie's custody.